The beginning of human expansion through the Earth is explained in classical science through the African theory. For whatever reason, humans congregated in the southern areas of the African continent, possibly due to the eruption of the Toba supervolcano, a topic we discussed on another video, and from there, conquered the Earth, spreading through Europe, Asia, the arm of Australia, which at the time was still connected to mainland Asia, and through Russia and Alaska into the Americas, where they went as far down as Argentina. This notion was supported through archaeological findings in various regions of Earth, showing the progression of technology and conquest of Earth to somewhat fit this pattern. But recently, a new theory is emerging. Aided by the technological advances in DNA sequencing and new techniques in archaeological research and discovery, scientists have started to question whether these primitive humans didn't have another origin. When the European conquistadors landed in the coast of Central America and Brazil, their intent was clear. Having divided the land in the Treaty of Tordesillas in 1494, the conquistadors brought the world of Jesus Christ to the natives of the New World. What they found was a cornucopia of cultures, from the northern frozen lands of the Alaska to the jungles of Brazil, the natives were all around them. Infatuated with the native women and, for the first trips, not having brought women of their own, the Spanish and Portuguese conquistadors started to mingle with the locals, either forcefully or through a system of trade locals named Escambo or barter, where conquistadors would trade mirrors, gunpowder, steel, and other stuff for women, riches, wood, pigments, etc. Because of this intermingling and the later 500 years of European presence in the continent, the resulting DNA shows clear signs of European influence, which is to be expected. No matter how remote or isolated a current tribe seems to be, their blood has European DNA in it, probably as a result of an encounter that could be centuries old. There is a truth that one can't deny, however. When the Europeans got to the Americas, they were already inhabited. Local populations have unique DNA signatures, and the European influence hasn't been enough to silence that. The inhabitants of the American continent before the arrival of Europeans were thought to have come from the land bridge that once connected Russia and Alaska, back when the sea level was about 60 to 120 meters lower than it is today. At that point in time, the piece that scientists call a land bridge was just land, a continuation of the Alaskan and Russian lands. Through these passages, the early humans would cross, going down from present-day Alaska to Canada, then America, and down to the central region of the continent, and further down to the South American region, passing the Amazon and the Atlantic forests, and finding the pampas of Lower Brazil, Uruguay, and Argentina. There is a lot of doubt surrounding the early conquest of the American continent by these migrating humans, but the prevailing one seems to be, did they come all at once or in pockets? The answer to that question may be in a cave in the Yukon region in the U.S.-Alaskan border with Canada. 33 miles away from the village of Old Crow are Bluefish Caves, where humans are thought to have resided about 24,000 years ago. Over the next 12,000 years, these residents of Bluefish Caves went on to conquer the entire American continent and make up the exclusive DNA information of the continent until 1492. These migrations have been identified through the studies of archaeological sites around the American continent, with the theories of patterns of migration suffering severe alterations of late. The multiple waves theory, proposing an explanation for the migration of early humans through multiple waves of populations moving to different areas of the continent from the same original pool, has failed as a model, primarily because the linguistic similarities used to show patterns of migration simply aren't convincing enough. The second theory, of a single people with technological advance that swept through the continent, leaving settlements around their wake, fails because of timing. For example, in the Mexican city of Clovis, there is an archaeological dig site that found what the scientists believe are bifaced spearheads, 
projectile points napped on both sides and other hunting paraphernalia that the archaeologues have determined to belong to the Clovis people circa 13,000 years ago. The prevailing theory was that the Clovis people were the original aboriginals, having migrated down from the Mexico region. But a finding of humans living in southern Chile 12,500 years ago without the Clovis technology disproves the theory of a single people generating the colonies and peoples of the continent. Nowadays, a third theory has emerged, promising to resolve the issue once and for all. The Bluefish Cave's inhabitants about 24,000 years ago were the original founders of the culture that spread down from the cold region of Alaska and went on to populate the whole American continent. An analysis of the genomes of indigenous people show 15 founding mitochondrial types not found in Asia. This suggests a time when genetic diversification occurred, an incubation lasting maybe 10,000 years. New gene variants then spread across American lands but not back into Asia. This is important. It means that the new genes came from Asia but never returned, meaning that the new genes were formed in a community that had no access back to Asia. Logically, a community formed on the other side of the Alaskan arm that broke when the sea levels rose. Nowadays, we see lower levels of genetic diversity in modern Native Americans than in the rest of the world, which points to the idea of a single, small population seeding the continents, and unlike Europe or Asia, these people being cut off with little admixture from new populations for thousands of years, at least until Columbus. Bodies found in Montana and Washington have been analyzed to death pardon the pun, for the last few years. The body in Montana belonged to a two-year-old child buried with honors with a lot of weapons next to him. The body found in Kenwick, Washington, belonged to a man in his 40s, from whom over 350 fragments of bone and teeth were extracted. The funny and, frankly, unbelievable part of this body's story was that his origin was a motive for a court dispute with one group of scientists arguing he was European, another saying he was Japanese or Polynesian, and another claiming he was Norse and therefore should be buried with Odin's honors. Never mind that Odin isn't a god worshipped today and that the Norse paganism was extinguished centuries ago and that, most importantly, this dead man was thousands of years old and absolutely no value would be gained from his reburial. Still, a battle had to be fought, and ultimately the judge ruled that the body looked European and therefore would not be reburied. But when DNA analysis was done on both bodies, it was determined they were both Native Americans and relatively close to each other. These bodies prove beyond a doubt that North and South America were populated by the same people. The genomes found in the bodies more closely resemble the current Central and South American populations today than any other in the world. These similarities don't show that the genetic groups haven't moved. On the contrary, they prove beyond a doubt that genetics are hard to comprehend and can't be easily shelved into boxes. In December of 2016, then-President Barack Obama allowed for the reburial of the Kennewick man as a Native American. The Kennewick man and the Anzic boy show that the story is far from told and there is still a lot to be learned. With so much more to learn and discover about the inhabitants of the Americas and the world as a whole, one thing is for certain, we can never stop researching. The story of today's video is another proof that science and the pursuit of knowledge are necessary, aiming to reveal the secrets of the human race and to further our knowledge of the species we belong to and to the world we live in. Earth is a beautiful place, full of wonder and knowledge to be seen and learned, and the indomitable human spirit longs for the discoveries. What do you think about this video? Leave your theories and opinions in the comments below.